Good morning. I'm Father Justin Crisp. I'm the priest in charge of St. Barnabas Church in Greenwich, Connecticut. I know that all of us have been heartbroken by the terrorist attacks committed by Hamas against Israel a few weekends ago, and that our hearts have continued to ache as violence and war has embroiled the whole region here, and our hearts ache particularly for the innocent Palestinians and Israelis who are caught now in the crossfire. The Christian leaders of the Holy Land, of all of the Christian churches that are present in the Holy Land, have designated today, Tuesday, October 17th, as a day of prayer and fasting for peace in the Holy Land. And our Archbishop, the Anglican Archbishop in Jerusalem, has asked all of the churches all of the Christians of the Anglican Communion throughout the world to join Anglicans in the Holy Land in this holy enterprise. And so I thought that we at St. Barnabas today might devote just a, a moment here to prayer. I was so blessed uh, that a member of the congregation just came here to the church uh, to pray with me the Great Litany, uh, which is a, a, an old prayer. It was the first prayer translated into English, actually, uh, during the English Reformation. It's often prayed at times of national catastrophe or stress or strain. And so we were able to pray that prayer here together, the two of us. And today I thought I would reach out uh, via Instagram and via email to invite all of you to a, a, shorter, uh, a shorter moment of prayer here. Um, I want to offer two prayers, one from our prayer book and the other one from the Anglican Archbishop in Jerusalem. Uh, the first prayer from the prayer book is a prayer for the whole human family, and the prayer that will follow that from the Archbishop is one that he has written particularly for this time of trouble in the Holy Land. So with that, and knowing that um, as the Apostle Paul has taught us that there is great power in praying without ceasing, I invite all of us to a moment of quietude. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and for all people of the land. While we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to violence and the establishment of peace, we also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom, where all people are treated with dignity and honor as your children. For to all of us, you are our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a few words here, I hope. Um, that might be of help to you and to your families at this time of national and international stress. And the first of which is that just as me and another parishioner uh, prayed here in the church this morning, St. Barnabas is open 24-7, 365 for private prayer, and I commend that to you. You are always welcome on the holy hilltop to come to this sacred space for a moment of peace and quiet. In addition, I hope that you will feel free to reach out to me. I want to be there for you. And if there is something which is burdening your heart about this or about anything else, please do be in touch with us. You can call me through the office or you can send me an email and we'll find a time to talk. And finally, uh, for those of you who are raising children, for parents and grandparents and all others, I, I have a, a particular thought for you about how you might talk to your kids about what's happening in the Holy Land. I think it is incredibly stressful for children to know about war and violence and so on. And we've had all too much of it in recent years and we have all too much of it right now. What was helpful to me when I was a kid 
was the teaching of Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And I remember that when Mr. Rogers was talking to kids about catastrophe or national or international stress, he would tell them, if you want hope, look for the helpers. Look for those who are helping. There are always helpers. There are always people helping. So even as you are honest with your children about what's going on in our world, that many people in Israel and Palestine are living with incredible, incredible stress and in unprecedented danger. Even as you're honest with your children about that reality, I would also ask you, I would encourage you to encourage them by saying there are also helpers there, right? There are leaders who are trying to work out peace. There are, uh, there, are, there are religious leaders who are trying to be voices of hope and reconciliation. And I would also say that there are people on the ground, including people who are related to us as Anglicans uh, here at St. Barnabas. There are people on the ground who are helping. You might pray with your kids especially for all those who are working in an Anglican hospital in Gaza now to care for all those who are caught in the crossfire between Hamas and Israel. In any case, I hope that, I hope that this moment of prayer has been helpful to you. We are called by the scriptures, by the Apostle Paul, to give an account of the hope that is within us. And I pray that all of us might enjoy the hope that we all have in the God of Jesus Christ, that no matter how dark it may get, no matter how dire it may seem, there is always the light and love of his resurrection dawning behind us. God bless you.